Welcome to How Did I Do It? I'm Joel Grimes with the Joel Grimes Academy. And so I thought it would be kind of fun to take an image, one of my images that I call my icon images, one of my best images, and I would just talk about how I did it. So um, I'm gonna go through a lot of my, what I call older images that I did uh, say in the last 10 years. Maybe I'll do something that will be even further back than that. But um, here we have Greg Wildman, uh, our cowboy. And this is one of my favorite pictures. In fact, it is printed, framed, and over one of my fireplaces. I love it. So if I get to that, to you get it on that fireplace, it's got to be pretty darn good. So um, that uh, tells me that, you know, again, if you want to hang it on the wall, you've done, you've done something good. Now, I have this whole photo shoot recorded behind the scenes, and it is, I show the retouch and how I did this. It's on the portrait photography, uh, on location portrait photography, series that I did and if you I'm put a little plug here if you sign up for a year membership at the Joel Grimes Academy you get this tutorial along with five others so I think or six others seven total of uh, me in the field shooting uh, and the old guy that's sitting on the outboard motors Don Robinson is in that series too that's one of my favorite and Canon has a huge print of that at their Canon Learning Center uh, in uh, Orange County in LA and so um, that is available for you to watch but not all of my images that I've done, well, not I say all of them, a good portion of my images, I don't have behind the scenes. I just picked this one because it's on my fireplace. I said, okay, I'm going to start with this. So how did I do this picture? Now, um, I talk a lot about lighting in the Joel Grimes Academy. I have hours and hours of tutorials on that. And so this is a one light setup, which I think if you can master, I always say if you can master the cross light, which is, this is a cross light, we call it the Rembrandt cross light, but cross light, or the light coming from over the top of the lens, a camera. So light over the top, coming down, cross the subject. If you can master those two lighting techniques, you can pretty much rock the world. You can do anything you want. You can add an edge light to, I always do that, one light over the top, add an edge light, um, or two edge lights. Um, with a cross light, you can also edge, add a little edge light to give some depth and drama. So, but you have to master those two lightings. And I love teaching lighting and getting people excited about taking strobes out in the field. So, with this one I have a medium softbox. It is, I, I think Westcott just changed their number. So it was a 36 by 48. So they call it, I think, a two by three or something like that. Um, it's, I call it a medium softbox. They have it set up so that I think it's considered a large, and then they have an extra large. But it's, it's you know, it's about this big. In fact, it's, it's I have one of those with a continuous light right now sh shining on me, making me look, you know, 10 years younger. Um, but that is a really good modifier to take in the field and do what I just did here. So it's a, a size modifier that I used for 30 years plus doing cross light. So this is a technique that I did for years, is taking a, uh, a strobe in the field, doing cross light, and I'm pushing the light in the direction it's already going. So the sun is going across um, uh, from the horse to the, you know, to our, our cowboy. So it's going from left to right. And then I put the softbox in that position and go left to right. If you, if you put the softbox on the other side going right to left, it'd look kind of weird. And I've done that by accident and I'm scratching my head, what's going on here? So push the light in the direction it's already going. That's a really important rule. And so, um, so at any rate, um, you, the softbox is just barely out of frame. So I got about a 24 millimeter lens, pretty wide. So that softbox has to be backed up quite a bit. And it has to throw light mm, probably 12 feet, 10 feet, 12 feet. That's a long distance to throw light. Um, normally, uh, when I talk about the bigger the source in relationship to the subject, the softer the light, 
um, you'd want your light a little closer, but I can't do that because um, I've got this wide angle lens. So that light is gonna be semi harsh, a little more contrasty and harsh than it would be if it was, because it's backed up so far. But that's okay because we're outdoors and looking like I want kind of a sun, almost the sun scenario. It's gonna be a little softer than the sun, but it's still pretty harsh, breaking across his face, getting that all that kind of you know weathered look. Uh, and the horse, he gets a little weathered look too. But um, so in Photoshop, I had to darken the horse a little bit because he got a little more light value than our cowboy. So that's a Photoshop thing. Um, I am running the softbox straight, 90 degrees in parallel to the axis of the, of the you know the lens. So it's not 45 degrees angle, it's completely cross light, 90 degrees shooting across him. And so then I have my, in this scenario, I have my shutter speed at 200th of a second. That's as high as I can go to do standard strobe scenario. I did not have, at this time, the new Godox 8600s that I can do high speed sync. So this was before those, so I had an Einstein uh, that uh, they say it's around 640 watts, which watts means really nothing. It's pretty punchy in power. The Godox put out the same amount of power and on standard mode, a standard flash mode, not high speed sync mode. And that's pretty good. So that gives me about, I need about F11, F16 light. Maybe you, you, um, in this scenario, the sun is going down so it's not high noon. So F11 gives me a pretty dark background. And, and I think in one of my tutorial, I may, it may be F10 or something. I don't know exactly what it was, F11, somewhere around there. Um, but you, you have a small aperture. When, you, when I talk about lenses, I'm always saying that you get diffraction when you get down to a smaller aperture. That over gives you an overall degradation of the image. So you want to avoid f16-22 if you can. Sometimes you can't. Um, in this scenario, I had to kind of give. I had to kind of go down in that small aperture. And today, if I was going to do it again, I might go into high-speed sync and keep it around f8. That would soften the background just a little bit, which might not be a bad thing to do because it kind of pops him off the background. Um, I could shoot it at probably 1.4 if I wanted, but then I might not get the horse in focus. Um, you know, um, that could be good too. So you want just the cowboy in focus, there's a way to do it. High speed sync, um, and there's some new technology on the market today that is absolutely amazing. Speed lights would not give you probably, unless you had like six of them in one softbox, you probably couldn't get enough light to go 12 feet, throw 12 feet in a softbox. You might be able to get four, uh, more like six. That's about what the equivalent is. So I got the light coming across. Um, I'm at 200 of a second, F, F11-ish, and then I have my ISO at 100. So that gives me the ability to strobe my subject, make the background dark. I did this for 25, 30 years. I built a whole career on it. And so um, I kind of went away from that for a while, doing composites, and then in this scenario, I wanted to try it again, and I love it. It's very, I would say, probably a little more natural looking than, say, a three-edge light. You know, putting a kicker light over here would not make a lot of sense, though it does build drama. And I do that, and I sometimes build an image that kind of gives me a fantasy feel. So in this case, I did not uh, do that, um, and it looks a little more natural. And the biggest challenge, of this whole shoot is working with a horse. Having him stand there, easy peasy. Horse wants to move around. So he would, he would kind of, horse would kind of move and start moving his butt in around that way and he'd have to walk the horse around, come back again, get in position, and then just about when it's ready, the horse moves again, you know, or whatever. So um, he had to grab the horse really tight and uh, the strobes, some horses will jump when you see a strobe. This horse kind of got used to it pretty quick and then was, was not worried about the strobe so much. So the cross light gives me um, shadows on one side of the subject. That builds depth. And so when I set up for a shoot like this, I have two options. I point my camera north or south. This is pointing dead north. I want that 
sun going across. Maybe just a tad in front of the subject, but really it's cross light. Match it with the strobe, bam. Get that high speed sync, or uh, sync up as high as you can, 200 a second, lots of power, there's your scenario. It's not rocket science. And it's um, very rewarding. And so um, I'm gonna show you there was just a portrait I did him with the horse kind of got a little fidgety so I took him out we did just a portrait and then I did this one where he sat on the horse sit light same position I raised it up a little bit get over the top of the head of the horse but um, um, fun stuff so there you go that is how I did it oh I did not say this I should have said this I had a Canon 5D SR with a 24 to 70 millimeter 2.8 version 2 lens, which is their um, extremely sharp lens. Um, so uh, that's the lens that I used, and I had a tripod, and um, I shoot on tripod all the time because it uh, gives me the sharpest uh, scenario for my optics. And I talk all about that in the Jewel Grimes Academy, which you could take a look at um, if you're interested. So there is how I did it.